Is that the Beatles? I like to ride my bike. Queen. Queen. That's bad. Good morning everyone. It is Saturday the 6th of August and it has just gone 5am and disappointingly it's still a little bit dark outside which is upsetting but there are two things guaranteed in life that the seasons will change and that Fergus will have oats for breakfast. So I'm going to run you through a full weekend of training, a Saturday Sunday of zone 2 work, plain and simple. Kicking things off today with around six hours of work, I'm gonna do 25 laps of Arthur's Seat. It's about 80 to 90 meters of elevation gain, five kilometers a lap, I'm gonna go around clockwise, and then I can use the car as a bit of a support base at the car park, sort of round the loop, which means I don't need to carry loads of water, carry loads of food, as if I was doing a sort of 150K out and back, which is just a bit simpler for the timings this weekend. And it mimics the monotony of the double brutal. It mimics the support mechanisms we're gonna have in place. So it's good practice overall. Then I need to be in Edinburgh for 3.30 as I'm hosting Chris Hoy at the Glen Eagles townhouse tonight. Then see how long that goes on for, see how that all goes and head back here to probably just unwind a little bit and, and sort of catch up on life somewhat. Then tomorrow morning, I've got four hours on my feet and Sunday afternoon, I'm going to try and keep as stress-free as possible, but you'll see how everything unfolds, which is exciting, is it not? Anyway, at this point, it is important to do some housekeeping as it would be very nice if you could like the video. You can make sure that you've hit subscribe and you can comment down below at any point with your thoughts or feelings. I'm going to get this all proteined up, put some berries on that, and I'm going to have a scoop of Human 24 Rise to kick things off caffeine, nootropics and electrolytes. Then I'm going to get several water bottles packed. I'm going to get them full of carbs and electrolytes. I'm going to get some schnecks to put in the car and I'm going to make sure that I've got in the tubes CO2 canisters. I say I won't need CO2 canisters because I can take a track pump and put it in the car. Brilliant. Brilliant. Anyway, that is that. I will see you very soon. Carly, come in. Before we head off for my ride, I thought my glamorous assistants and I would review my whoop data. So I'm feeling a little bit worn out today, which is reflected in the data. So 56% recovery overnight and sleep data is disappointing. I was asleep at quarter to midnight as I struggled to get to sleep somewhat and was working quite late and was up at half four this morning to be met with darkness out of the window, which to reiterate is a little upsetting at this point. Wouldn't you agree, Harley? A very tentative handshake. She agrees. Pig, thoughts? Pig has no thoughts. He is French. He keeps his thoughts to himself. Realistically, how am I going to use this data? It means I'm really going to focus on getting a decent night's sleep tonight. I'm going to focus on my nutrition in the evening. I'm not going to have any drinks tonight. I'm going to make sure that I'm hydrated during and after my ride. And I'm just going to be conscious that if I have another bad night's sleep where I'm sort of deprived or really quite worn out, then that will catch up with me tomorrow and that will catch up with me leading into the week. So we want to avoid that. But that's how I use Whoop on a day-to-day -day basis. I'm not seeing 56% recovery and changing the way that I'm gonna to train today. I'm just gonna take that data and change a few things or be a bit more conscious of a few things around my training programming and structure. So there we are. Anything else to say, lady and gentlemen? Keep your secrets. Three things are important to mention at this stage before I get packed up and head off for my ride. First of all, if you would like to give Whoop a go at any stage and would like your first month for free, which you obviously do, then please head to the link in the description down below and you can try before you buy, as it were. See where the data fits into your lifestyle, how you can use it and whether or not it's for you. Secondly, important to mention just how compliant Harley was there. That's very out of character for her. I feel as sidelined in this household by her as I can imagine Donald Trump now feels by the White House. So it's nice every once in a while when Erin isn't around that Harley reminds me that, yeah, I'll do, I'll do. And thirdly, just in case you hear any background noise, it's probably important to mention that yes, Pig does indeed snore with his eyes open. 
So after those three critical points have been made, let's go and get sorted for my ride. Okay, so it's 11 minutes past seven and behind me is the general area of Arthur's Seat. The actual peak is over there, but I'm gonna head up this way, loop round. It's about 5.1K, about 82 meters. The exact number will be for you just here for clarity, but 25 laps of the brief. I'm gonna go until quarter past one, which is six hours, as that gives me enough time to get back to the house, to shower, to get changed, to get back into Edinburgh for 3.30 because traffic in Edinburgh at the moment is horrendous. So I just need to err on the side of caution, but I'm gonna crack on. It's actually quite chilly. I'm shivering a little bit. So fingers crossed that is sorted very soon, but the descent over that way can get a little bit cold, but this first hill is pretty rusty toasty. So I think I'm gonna crack on pretty much from here. Not really much more to add. Very much just a brief of staying in zone two, getting efficient on the hills, really dealing with the monotony of the repeated laps. I've never done this many laps around here before. I don't know anyone that's done this many laps around here before. I'm sure there's some fruit loops out there that have, but we've got the car just in the car park at the bottom of this loop. So I can restock. So I'm just gonna take one bottle with me. I've got a spare tube, tire levers, etc. in case I have a puncture at the far end. But generally speaking, I've got the car as a base as I would at the double Bristol with the support system, support car and the laps around Snowdon that we're doing. So without any further ado, I'm going to... Is that the Beatles? I like to ride my bike. Queen. Queen. That's bad. Anyway, Queen, that song. If it wasn't copyrighted, we'd play it now, but we can't, so goodbye. <laughs> Okay, pit stop number one, so all I'm going to do is replace this with this. And I haven't actually had any fuel other than my carbs much less yet, because my hands are barely working because it's so cold. So I'm going to get this done here, and then that means that I don't have any jelly, sticky rubbish in my back pocket, because it's always a pain. Simple as that. I'm also pretty sure the park run is doing the, the full loop that I'm doing, so this could get quite congested, but what an absolutely fantastic creation park run is it's so good seeing such an eclectic mix of people expensive trainers cheap trainers dogs big dogs small dogs people in kilts just fantastic so hopefully i don't knock anyone over hopefully this is still workable but pitch number one complete nine laps down 16 to go is that right yeah that is right Okay, pit stop number two, 15 down, 10 to go. And I feel like I've started working now rather than just cruising, which is sort of good, obviously, as that's how aerobic adaptation occurs. Um, my hands are all sticky and horrible from a gel that I obviously didn't fully finish that I put in my back pocket. So I'm kind of a little bit wound up by just having my hand glued to my handlebar for a little while. But other than that, I just need some food on board, I think. My hands have sort of been cold and numb, so actually getting gels out and ripping them off has been difficult. Bit of a restock, fluid's all good. Fairly uncongested. They've closed one of the gates though, which means you've really got to slow down coming into a roundabout. So you go from like 52 kilometers an hour where you can take the corner at about 35 and you need to come to like two to wiggle through and then pick up pace again. So I think uh, I can feel my power dropping a little bit, but other than that, everything as expected, to be honest. Timeline-wise, time I think I'm okay. 
Uh, still on track to manage 25 before sort of 1 p.m., 1.15 at the absolute latest. But yeah, I think I'll probably just crack on now for the remaining 10 and catch up with you at the finish, wherever, whenever, we'll, we'll be here. We'll definitely be here. But whenever that is, we'll find out. Je suis fini, 22 laps as it is 12.43. And I just want to get back to the house, get changed, eat and get there in good time. I don't want to feel rushed going into this evening. I've got a whole lot of questions and things that I need to learn and need to be on the ball. So I don't want to go into it feeling rushed. And I wasn't going to make 25 laps. So I thought 22 is a nice round number. I was going to go and cut it at 21 because there's jokes about blackjack and Arthur being of legal age to now drink in America on his seat, but it's not worked out. 22 laps, data on the screen for you just here. I don't have it on my phone yet, but 5.05, so minimum amount of time I wanted to do today was five hours, so tick there. 117 kilometers, average speed 23 kilometers an hour, average power 197, average weighted power, normalized power, sorry, is 234, and then the rest of the details you'll see on the screen or is not relevant. So there you are, that is job done for the day. I'm gonna get this back in the car. That was monotonous, that was dreary, that was horrible, but that's ultimately why I've done it, because it's very relevant to the lap format of the brutal and the relentless hill repeat, hill repeat is sort of quite relevant for the penny pass there as well. So, job done. I will see you at the house so that I don't now eat into all the time that I bank to get home in good time by talking to you for too long, goodbye. Look at me contradicting myself, but just wanted to cover this very quickly before I head off. And some of you might be thinking, he said 25 laps, he's done 22. Is that a successful training session? Have all the boxes been ticked, etc., etc. And I just thought I'd cover that from a programming point of view before I head off. So yes, the goal was 25 laps. I calculated within the time I had available based on an estimate of what pace I'd be able to sustain. However, park run, gates, stopping here, filming, chatting to Campbell as I go, getting the GoPro out, um, a headwind that got worse and worse from about lap six on the top flat and then all of the downhills which really did eat into my average speed meant that over time that sort of estimate was chewed away at but ultimately 25 laps is an arbitrary number it was a case of just time in the saddle doing the work and doing those repeats over and over again and ultimately getting that psychological hardening from just doing the same 5k loop over and over again so in my mind as a broader context set of metrics that's been a very successful training session for me but i just wanted to touch on that because with some of the athletes that we work with some friends i have an older version of myself i may have been hard on myself because i said i was going to do 25 but only did 22 but ultimately i've done what i can within the time i had available to the highest standard that i can perform and there are a few variables that i couldn't have predicted for that ultimately meant that 25 wasn't the number achieved so all things are considered success. So just wanted to cover that because it's important to consider each and every training session and general successes day to day in life within that broader context. So if you sometimes need to reframe how you think about things, just something to bear in mind. Okay, I'm actually gonna go home now, goodbye. Hi, uh, can I get a steak bake, ham and mature cheddar cheese toasty, vanilla latte please, large, cheers. I can catch up on micronutrients later when I'm at the house, but tight turnaround time. I think convenience is the real winner here. Hence Greg's, obviously. If anyone seen my Garmin V Whoop video, this one here, then you will know that the symbol that I use, that I'm about to go to work, slash not train or lie around, I guess. Put the watch on, let's go. Forgot to put deodorant on, didn't I? Okay, fairly quick turnaround there. Relatively stress-free and not feeling rushed, which was priority number one, so big tick. Pat on the back, thumbs up for me there. Well done, Fergus, good shift. It is 20 to three now, and I'm gonna head in just to give myself plenty of time if there's any apocalyptic level traffic on the way in, which there is these days in and around Edinburgh, especially over August, then hopefully I can get through it without feeling rushed or stressed. There's a theme developing here. But nonetheless, that is the plan. So I'm gonna park up, do some last minute prep, either in the car or in the townhouse itself. But bottom line is, I don't know whether I'll be able to film much, if any, inside. 
So brief for this evening is Glen Eagles Hotel have historically hosted fireside conversations with a variety of interesting people. And now that they've opened the townhouse in Edinburgh, which is basically just a Georgian building, incredible inside, they are hosting Sir Chris Hoy this evening to do a fireside conversation in one of the function rooms in the townhouse. And I am hosting and interviewing and looking after Sir Chris in that capacity, which is very, very exciting. So just gonna go through a fair few questions. I just wanna keep line of questioning fairly targeted based on the conversations we've had up until now and just to make sure we cover as much of Sir Chris's varied existence so that we can cover every demographic in the room, not just the roadies or not just the people interested in the Olympic success, but more recently the driving, hoy bikes, all this stuff, loads of, loads of stuff to cover. So I can't imagine there's gonna be any footage of me in there. There might be a photo or two that I can share, but you're just gonna have to take my word for it, I guess. So I will maybe speak to you beforehand, maybe not, but I will definitely see you afterwards. So. <laughs> Let's find out how exciting for us all. You may be able to tell that I am not, in fact, sitting in the luxurious interior of Glen Eagles Townhouse, but rather the car park at Asda, as I've collected a whole load of sushi for Aaron and I's dinner tonight when I get in. That went really well. Really pleased with how the questions landed, really pleased from a selfish point of view with the responses, as there was a lot that I could take from it. Amazing to hear from someone with such a decorated career on things specifically, how he's pivoted his personality traits of sort of a not obsessive, but real, real focus and ambition and drive in one thing and turned it into another. So definitely some things I can take away. Room of about 40 people I know that they took certain things away. Really enjoyed it. No evidence that I filmed anything. I didn't film anything, so I don't have any evidence on this SD card for you. But if there is anything, because I know some photos were taken, it'll be just here. If there isn't, then use your imagination. You know what I look like. You know what Chris Hoy looks like with a Google search if you don't. Let your mind do the rest. So I'm gonna get home. I am gonna actually sign off for the night here as quite frankly, I'm sick of looking at this camera and I just wanna go home, eat some sushi and sit in front of the TV for an hour. Then I'm gonna be in bed for half nine. I'll have a serving of Human 24 pre-sleep. Other than that, I'm gonna focus on hydration. I'm gonna get to bed and read a little bit before I do just to unwind. And then tomorrow, five hours on my feet for which you will be joining me. So with that in mind, I'm gonna say good night now as it has been a long day and I'd quite like to stop working on this lovely Saturday evening and I will see you all tomorrow. Okay, now I'll say good night and see you tomorrow. Good morning, everyone. So, just coming up to 10 a.m. and you may notice I haven't filmed much of my morning thus far. As I woke up a little bit groggy, a little bit done in, reflected in my whoop data, I think 36% was what I was giving you, 36% recovery score, which is reflective of how I feel, to be perfectly honest. So I looked at my camera and just kind of thought, no, no, I don't want to do it, keep it away from me. So that's, that's what I did. And I've sat at my desk, had my breakfast, had my rise, and just been cracking on with a couple of hours work editing a podcast with Mark Beaumont that's going live the Monday after this video does. So if you aren't aware of the podcast or haven't listened yet, bottom link in description is where you can find all the details and do please listen in. As well as that, a little bit of admin, little athlete things here, a few comms, a few emails that I just want to get done before tomorrow because Mondays for me are very time blocked and specific to certain tasks. My longest working day of the week. So I didn't want these things to carry over into Tuesday because I then would feel like I was chasing my tail somewhat. Normally I try and keep Sundays as total rest days away from my phone and only work if I absolutely have to, other than just uploading a YouTube video later on in the day. But with the way this prep is unfolding, the volume is so demanding, I have long runs on Sunday as it stands at the moment, which does mean that I do feel a bit always on at the moment, which is wearing me down and, and wearing me a bit thin to be perfectly honest. But nature of what I've signed up to, I am feeling a little bit deprived of quality time with Erin, with the dogs, time to just not do anything, time to sort of let my brain settle and not think about what I need to be doing or what's happening next or the washing I need to do or the admin I need to do to get my kit ready for the next day, all this stuff. So it's all gonna be all gonna be over soon. September the 10th is race day, or 10th and 11th, and maybe the early hours of the 12th. But it's, yeah, it's demanding. There's elements of it I'm enjoying, there's elements of it that I'm not enjoying. But I just thought I'd be honest with you, it's it's taking its toll on me, I'm finding it tough, and being always on isn't a good place for me to be because I find it very difficult to switch off, which can feel quite chaotic and intense. So I'm doing my best to manage it, but it's an ongoing process. Anyway, as I've mentioned already in this video, I have a long run today. I was hoping to set off for 10.30, but given I've messed around at my desk and got into a bit of a Norseman-shaped 
rabbit hole given that that race was yesterday. I'm one year out. Ailey from Scotland, 26 year old, won in the women's race. Congratulations, looked like an absolute brute of a day out. So very, very exciting to see two years. The two years that I've been at the Keltman, Ailey, the winner there, has gone and won the Norseman, which is just awesome. So four hours of work is scheduled. I'm gonna run into off the seat, do a couple of laps, head up to the peak so you can see what that looks like, and then run back. Should be give or take four hours. Gonna really take it at race pace, as it were. So strict list parameters for my running and any hills that take me out of that list. I'll just walk them because after a 7.6K swim, 360K bike, I'm not gonna be moving all that quickly when it comes to the run section of the double brutal. So I should be training as I will be competing, competing, racing, crying, whatever you wanna call it. So walking the hills, just getting used to that sort of change in biomechanics and then that psychological, okay, let's start running again, will be useful. But beyond that, I'll take you through the rest of the afternoon, but let me get everything sorted for my run. I'll show you what I'm taking with me on my person and then we'll get running. Okay, what am I going to be carrying on my person, you ask? The Osprey Duro 6, I reply. So key points are one and a half litres of water out of a bladder in the back. I have a 500 milliliter soft flask with electrolytes and carbs and an extra electrolyte tablet in here. And then I have a backup in the main compartment there, which you can see sticking out the top here. Then I have backup gels, chews, and salt sticks in there if needed. On this side, in the front pocket that's easily accessible, I have some Minions Squashies, which are banana and blueberry flavoured. Not that excited about these, to be honest, but they were the only thing they had in stock, so these must. Phone in there. I have my easily accessible gels and brunch bars on this side, and then inhaler just there. Weighs about five or six kilos. I'd rather be running with less, to be honest, but this means I can go on a self-supported run away from the house and back without having to worry too much. So let's get this on and see you on the road. Okay, so just over five kilometers deep. And to be perfectly honest, I feel terrible. I feel heavy. My lungs feel fatigued. My heart rate, relatively speaking, is higher than it should be relative to effort. But it's just cumulative volume cumulative stress, about six weeks of seven days a week consistent training to be able to get the volume in for this event around a busy commercial period. So <laughs> oh, today's going to be soul searching. I put headphones in just to give me a bit of a distraction, which I've always said is a trick that I keep up my sleeve. And I have reached into my sleeve today. So what I'm doing is because I want to be focused rather than just listening to music or something. I'm listening back to podcasts I've done, well recorded with guests rather, for the modern mind. And I'm just thinking as I go on how I could have done things better. So if I'm going to suffer through a long run, and then I can reframe it into a very successful podcast research and analysis session. So there you are, an insight into uh, me slowly losing the plot, it seems. I'll catch up with you very soon. And I hope you can hear all this because it is quite windy. I'm in a fairly brutal headwind, which isn't making things much easier. Goodbye. <laughs> at this stupid place. So I'm gonna do two anti-clockwise loops, walk the hills, run the flats and the downs, just to mimic what it's gonna be like at the double as much as possible. Then I'm gonna head up to the summit, come back down, and then head home, I think. That's best guess on timings. So looking for four hours of work, but I'm gonna be stopping to change my bag, probably just mimic that stop-start effect that I'll get in the double. <laughs> Lovely day to be fair, with hindsight, short sleeve t-shirt would have been wise, but I'm coming up to a flat section, so I'll see you very soon. 16k down, back on the uphill section of first lap, and that'll be second lap begins, repeat. Feeling okay now, in a bit more of a rhythm, bang on average of six minute k's thus far, all inclusive, so I definitely feel worse than moving, 
I'm just going to make sure I take today real steady, stick to those race pace parameters, get used to the feeling of walking and restarting and see how we go really. That's all I can do. So I'm going to try these and let you know how I get on. Not bad. Not bad. Lap one complete, just about to start running again. Great opportunity to get as much fluids in as I can, get as much food in as I can, refill my soft pouch, just recalibrate a bit mentally exactly what I'm going to be doing when it comes to the double, but much more frequently. So, there we go. Coming to the end of lap two, and I'm going to do a third. I know what you're thinking at this point, Fergus, you bloody love laps of Alpha Seat, and at this point, that does seem to be the case, but there is a balance here of psychological monotony alongside convenience, which is very useful for my training currently, so I don't know why this has become a thing. Blood. But I'll just move on now, I think. Quick water refill, one, because it's ice cold, and two, because I don't really plan on stopping again. I've got through a fair amount of water, as it turned out, to be quite hot, so get this down me and keep cracking on. Okay, starting ascent up there. I mean, it's hardly a mountain, but gonna get there. F few technical little elements just to see how I feel on the foot. With fatigue in my legs, we're gonna head up. It looks very congested from down here. It's a tourist hotspot 100% of the year, and it's the Edinburgh Fringe, and it's a Sunday, and it's pleasant. So I'm not even sure I'll be able to get to the top without having to proper dinosaur with a dome on the head my way through but we'll find out so feeling in a good rhythm now I'm pleased with the fact that every time I'm moving at pace I'm sitting below the six minute K mark when I'm walking yeah I've got that sort of like heavy hips heavy quads that comes with it but it's just feeling really like I expect everything to feel when the double rolls around so I guess it's going well. back on sort of ground I can move on properly. I came down the uh, inconvenient way to add a bit of zest and spice to the subscribers at the top that said hello. Thank you for doing so. I've forgotten your names. Sincere apologies, but genuinely thank you. Always nice to meet people. Just going to keep moving now. I am, one sec, three hours and 17 minutes elapsed. Um, so just going to keep cracking on. Feeling fairly rhythmic now, not really looking at pace, just moving, which is exactly what I should be doing, so in a good place. Walking up the toughest hill on the way home, gets to a like 8% gradient, so there's not a chance I'm running up that at the moment, but I've just run out of fluid with 3 hours and 41 elapsed, so actually that's not too bad, but it does mean I'm not going to push it beyond 4 hours today, just because I don't want to get a bonky at all, because it just affects recovery so, so much. I'm actually feeling really quite solid now, given I got off to a really shaky start. I feel like I can keep going for a while, which is fair, because I haven't been moving very quickly at all. It's not been about speed today, it's been about practice, psychology, and just really sort of grooving that rhythm. So, 18 minutes 
before I probably call it there and maybe walk it in or we'll see what Erin's doing, see if she wants to come get me as well, it'll be about 10 minutes drive away. But there we are, hot day in the end, so long sleeve t-shirt, poor decision. Not planning in more restocks along the way, poor decision. Not having a cap on the whole time, poor decision. A litany of poor decisions, really. And I am home with some very seductive hat hair, might I say. Anyway, all went well. Got Erin to pick me up with about two kilometers left because I was completely out of fluids and did start to feel a little bit bonky. So didn't want to massively impact my recovery by slogging at home and then coming home parched. So I'm now going to do exactly that by getting in the bath, but keeping it fairly cool as the amount of times I've made the mistake of getting into the bath, making it way too hot and then sending myself into a rather aggressive dehydration spiral. I would be a very rich man if I had a pound for every time I'd done it. Let's put it this way. Anyway, happy with how that's gone. Data on the screen for you just here. All in all, very pleased. Average heart rate 140. Basically moving at best case scenario pace given the fact I'll have 7.6k of swimming and 360k of bike in my legs and mimicking the walking, mimicking the food strategy, mimicking everything I have in my person as I've covered already. So I'm not going to go into too much detail. I am going to get in the bath. I'm going to review the video for the Sunday that I'm filming this on going out this evening but this will be coming out a week later. So I'm going to watch last week's video, this one here in the bath now, check that it's all okay, and then get it uploaded afterwards. So that's my process for anyone wondering. It's not always in the bath, but it normally is about this time on a Sunday. So let's clean myself up as I'm smelling pretty horrendous, I must admit. Bath complete, and I was in there for quite a while. It's 24 minutes past five. I am just gonna make a few changes to the video that Campbell sent over, real small things. So I need to get it to Final Cut Pro, download a few bits, drag them in, cut a few things, and then get that uploaded for YouTube at 7 p.m. Then need to go to the supermarket, get something on the barbecue, and that's pretty much it. Need to do an Instagram post as well, which is sort of half done and won't take long, but just another thing to box off. And then that is me for the evening, and Erin has not seen past season three of Peaky Blinders, so we have finished the terminal list for those that were interested, and we are now kicking Peaky Blinders, Picky, kicking Peaky Blinders, Kicking picky blinders up from season one, like. Um, as I have not seen the last season and would like to, but we can't watch it together unless I start from season one. But it's been so long I'm going to do it anyway. I digress. The bottom line is, I'm going to crack on with this here, and then I'm going to say goodbye to you all, as it has been a long weekend, and quite frankly, I would like to stop working. And I would like to just lie on the sofa and laugh at my two dogs as they provide endless sources of entertainment. So, training-wise, everything went well today. Happy with it. It was a rough start, as I've already covered, but data on the screen for you just here as a reminder, by the way. All in all, well, let's keep training session. It was hotter than I expected. Long sleeve t-shirt was a poor decision, but the pace felt solid throughout in terms of once I was not walking and running. Everything felt smooth and well executed, and I've got a lot of fatigue in my legs, so it was all very, very relevant for where my training needs to be at the moment. I also appreciate, I've said over and over again, I'm spread very thin at the moment. No cause of concern at your end, I am managing workload. Just the nature of the position that I'm in at the moment, which is a which is a great one. I don't want to make that unclear at all. A lot of your guys' support is, is helping things grow. There's things in the background of the modern mind business to business that are growing. There's lots of exciting things happening, but the nature of how I do things is that I struggle to switch my brain off, which is just something that I'm going to manage ongoing. So I am going to try and start seeing a therapist on a regular basis to try and sort of calibrate myself a little bit more, because although I'm very self-aware, in terms of how to manage my own mental health, I think having that outlet, having that date in the diary, collecting my thoughts on a regular basis would be very useful for me at the moment. As I'm an ambitious person, whether that's athletically, whether that's commercially, there's a lot of things moving in the right direction, but I'm just very keen to make sure that I do things at the right pace, focus on the right things at the right time, prioritize in the right order, and do what I can so that I can actually enjoy the present as well, rather than just being always on. Because it's not fair on Erin, it's not fair on my friend, it's not fair on myself, and it's, it's meaning that there's a bit of an ebb and flow each day at the moment where I can get quite stressed, quite irritated, quite fast, which is something I definitely want to fix. So, yes, I'm struggling a little bit with this training volume, but if it were easy, everybody would do it, I guess, is the case. So whilst it'd be easy to say, oh, do, do less training, do all this, do all that, yeah, but it's the nature of training for a double 
Ironman distance triathlon is it's going to be hard to manage and that's what I'm looking forward to about this I'm already sharing some things I've learned about myself throughout this process and the aim of this channel and the aim of how I want to present myself on this channel is to be entirely authentic and maintain integrity throughout easier thing to do on YouTube would be to be dishonest and say that everything's going great Oorah, look at me double training running two businesses doing all this but that's not what I'm about it's tough at the moment it's self-inflicted yes they're all good things, but I'm very eager to capitalize on opportunities when they're there. I'm very eager to do the right thing. I'm very eager to develop myself. And that comes with pressure that's in here. And it's difficult for me to, for me to manage sometimes. So I just thought I'd share that with you. No cause for concern at your end. Everything is very much under control, but I just thought I'd cover that before we finish things off. And on that note, only thing I will do for the rest of the evening of any note is have a serving of pre-sleep by Human24. Four tablets there, something I've been doing for almost a year and a half, year and a bit now, basically, and it has really made a difference. If I ever travel and forget it, I do feel the effects, and it's reinforced by the Whoop data, so use Fergus10 for 10% off, link in the description if you would like to grab yourself some. And yeah, that's pretty much it for the video today. I've worn a very obviously Gymshark tank because it was the first thing that I could grab and hmm, if I'm going to the supermarket and walking the dogs this might be a bit obnoxious upon reflection but nonetheless if you would like to shop Gymshark it does me and the channel solid so please do use the link in description as well and I would be very very grateful. Quite a long outro, quite a long debrief so for that I apologise but I do hope you've enjoyed this video. Please do make sure to like comment and subscribe if you have not yet already. That was a nine hour training weekend I would like you to subscribe, please. Cheers. Thank you. Anyway, I hope you all have a wonderful evening or morning or afternoon, whatever time of the day it is that you are watching this. I will speak to you all very soon.